Few places in the world match the concentration and diversity of the mineral springs found in Steamboat Springs, Colorado. Historical records indicate 150 springs once flourished in this area. Each varied greatly in temperature, composition, and mineral content. Today there are nine springs accessible to the public. Geology drives the location, flow, and composition of each spring. Each spring retains its own unique combination of minerals, even though they are located within a two-mile radius of one another. Mineral content of a spring is derived as heated waters move upward from igneous chambers along a fault line to the Earth's surface, dissolving minerals from rock layers deep underground as the water moves upward. The result is that each spring has a unique combination of naturally occurring minerals. As dynamic groundwater pathways shift, springs may disappear and reappear, sometimes in new places, making their preservation all the more challenging and important. With over 150 mineral springs once in the area, the Yampa Valley remains a sacred place for native people. For centuries, the Ute people, or Yampatika Ute, the original occupants of this land, utilized the area's mineral springs, which they believe are sacred. The mineral waters are considered healing, and plants gathered in this valley are especially powerful for medicinal purposes. Historically, people soaked in the area's many mineral springs and bathed their horses in the waters to imbue them with magical powers before battle. In addition to the Yampatika Utes, many other Ute bands and Native American tribes, such as the Shoshone and Arapaho, once traveled through the valley and bathed in the area's mineral waters. In 1881, the Ute Indians were permanently removed from the Yampa Valley to reservation. The first known written record of the area's mineral springs was by explorer Thomas Jefferson Farnham. In his book, written in 1839 and published in 1941, titled Travels in the Great Western Prairies, he notes of the Sulphur Cave in Springs, quote, About 12 o'clock we came upon a cave formed by the limestone and sulphur deposits of a small stream that burst from a hill hard by. While the numerous mineral springs caught many a traveler's attention, the naming of Steamboat Spring and later the town is attributed to fur trappers, who heard the sounds of a paddle wheel steamboat and thought they had reached a major waterway. Instead, they found what was believed to be the only natural geyser in Colorado. Steamboat Springs geyser once spouted up to 14 feet in the air and is considered similar to geyser eruptions in Yellowstone National Park. While this geyser has not erupted at this site for over 100 years, modern geologists have studied how the geysers may have functioned. Over time, a layered mass of limestone rock wore away, creating a cave which continually filled with spring water. With only a small opening at the top, water was restricted from being released. When the cave filled to capacity, pressure built up and a chugging sound indicated the geyser was about to erupt. Destruction of the geyser occurred in 1908 during construction of the railroad. The town was named for this spring after James Crawford, the first white settler in the area, staked his claim on an aspen tree nearby. Soon after arriving with his family, they discovered additional mineral springs. James Crawford saw great potential in the springs and believed the town would become a world-class spa resort. The family's first cabin was built on the hill near Iron Spring. They bathed in the bubbling of the sulfur spring, which was good for keeping mosquitoes away. Mr. Crawford even accidentally stumbled into a hot spring while hunting. He named it Bath Spring and it became an immediate attraction. People traveled for miles just to soak in the warm water. After the arrival of the town's first sawmill, a bathhouse was built over the bath spring and was one of the first frame structures in town. In 1923, a blueprint of future construction at the hot spring shows plans for individual bathing pools and additional changing rooms. In 1931, a water carnival was held at the Steamboat Springs Swimming Pool. Competitions and demonstrations attracted people from across the country. Former carnival worker Ray Woods dove from a 100-foot high ladder into the pool fed by the hot spring. In 1933, under ownership of H.W. Gossard, the Bath Springs are named Rocky Mountain Miracle Spa, offering a hydrotherapeutic department for women, complete with a competent masseuse. New cobblestone walls in the shape of a heart were completed by Mason Joel Anderson around the hot spring, which was renamed Heart Spring. The depth of the pool was then extended to 10 feet and 6 inches. A sun beach was created and a spacious lawn adjoined with umbrellas, chairs, and tables created a colorful, decorative, and useful space. While Bath Spring was popular as a community gathering space, another spring just outside of town, called Strawberry Park Hot Springs, also garnered much popularity. The spring was once accessible only in the summer. 
Early settlers learned that eggs submerged in the 153 degree spring waters cooked to perfection. An annual egg cook was held at the hot springs for many years. In the 1970s, nudity became such a problem at the Strawberry Park Hot Springs that local law enforcement were dispatched to issue citations. Fortunately, in 1983, Don Johnson purchased the springs from the Health and Recreation Association. In 1991, Johnson renovated the place and turned it into a formal recreation area. Newspapers of the early 1900s refer to Steamboat Springs as the future metropolis of Route County a refuge for rest, retirement, a resort for pastime, and a sanitarium for the weak and invalid. Steamboat Springs Mineral Springs have been credited with healing numerous ailments. At one time, Sulphur Spring was considered most valuable for the many cures it promised, including relief from rheumatoid arthritis, gout, scrofula, cutaneous diseases, and blood poisoning. Today, this spring is better known for its rotten egg smell. The smell comes from rocks that contain sulfide minerals such as pyrite. Bacteria feed on the sulfide minerals and convert it to hydrogen sulfide, which harbors the distinct smell. The sulfur also tarnishes pennies and metal statues nearby. Today, the spring best known for its healing properties is Lithia Spring. Of the few lithium springs in the United States, this spring is said to have the highest lithium content by far. Lithia was once prescribed by doctors to treat bipolar disorders, cure gout, rheumatism, arthritis, liver disorders, kidney disorders, anemical disease, and blood disorders, as well as ease inflammation of the bones and joints. The value of Lithia Spring was perceived to be so great that in the 1930s, businessman H.W. Gossard renamed the spring Miracule Waters and made plans to bottle the water for sale across the country. He also constructed a steel tank in the trunk of his car to transport his precious waters to California for the winter, so he would never be without them. Steamboat Springs locals, past and present, still swear by the mood-balancing properties of the spring. Another local favorite was Soda Spring, a sparkling and highly effervescent spring. As an enthusiastic fan once said, quote, if judged by taste and effect, Soda Spring has no superior in the world. Fizzy lemonade was made from this spring by mixing the water with lemon syrup or a slice of fresh lemon. A public outcry occurred when Soda Spring and its gazebo were moved to widen the highway. Despite protests, the highway was expanded and the spring lost much of its force. Today, the spring runs underground. The collection of mineral springs were so popular that signs were placed at both entrances to town touting Steamboat Springs as nature's great laboratory. Perhaps the most unique spring of all is one people barely notice anymore, Sulphur Cave and Springs. The very first spring to be written about is still revealing secrets today. In 1962, Rodolfo Musco, a student from Taranto, Italy, with caving experience, entered into Sulphur Cave. The goal was to collect samples from various depths during his exploration. Musco ran out of oxygen and was pulled unconscious from the cave by a rope and resuscitated moments later but not before he discovered stalacites and stalagmites colored yellow with sulfur and something else that in 2007 was identified as rare snotites. Snotites have been found only in three other caves on Earth. Also observed and found nowhere else on this planet are clumps of pencil-thin red worms named Limondrinus sulfurenus. Due to the unique discoveries and rare atmosphere in the cave, Sulphur Cave and Springs was designated a National Natural Landmark by the National Park Service in 2019. The city of Steamboat Springs has largely retained care and ownership of the mineral springs throughout the town's history. The springs remain accessible to all, however, detailed underground geothermal maps are lacking. Maps and studies would demonstrate where development could impact underground spring flows. Further, there are not written protections or safeguards in place to preserve the springs from the impacts of future growth. Human activity has already negatively affected at least two springs, Steamboat Spring and Soda Spring. We encourage you to take the Springs Guided Walking Tour offered each summer by Yampatika and Tread of Pioneers Museum. Go and explore the springs on your own and or advocate for the protection of these unique wonders. Mineral springs support an abundance of life from bacteria that live deep beneath the Earth's surface to a variety of plant life surrounding the springs and numerous animals that often frequent the warm, mineral-dense waters. Balancing a growing population with preservation can be a difficult task. Because springs are dynamic, we understand that both established springs and surrounding areas need to be protected from development that would disrupt the water sources that feed the springs. As technology develops, further discoveries like those within the Sulphur Cave are possible. 
Thermal imaging, aerial mapping of spring deposits, and identification of vegetation patterns are key to documenting and understanding these underground mysteries which we cannot see. Local ordinances need to protect these springs, and visitors to the springs can help by respecting the waters and their surroundings. In the words of Lolita Crawford Pritchett, granddaughter of the first settlers, quote, in the loud demands of the present, it is easy to sacrifice priceless natural treasures and beauty that can never be regained. We have already wasted too much of our heritage. Let's not waste all of it. <laughs>